Bike Fit Tuesdays is back. Today on Bike Fit Tuesdays, five tips for setting up your handlebars. We need Chris. Come on, bring him in. <laughs> Someone's broken him. <laughs> so first thing, yeah. when, can, when the first thing we this is the first Bike Fit Tuesdays we filmed quite a while. There's going to be mistakes. So the first thing we need to consider when looking at, at front ends is handlebar width. Now they range anywhere between 36 centimeters all the way up to, if you're really stupid, 50 centimeters. What if you're actually that wide? Nobody's that wide. And the, I mean, the, the 50 centimeter is quite common in sort of gravel circles because you need more control for off-road. Mm, I disagree. Anyway, uh, they, they come in two centimeter increments, typically. Uh, there are some brands like, for example, Canyon's uh, in-house in handlebars come in 39 centimeters, but they typically come in 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, and you use quite often 46 centimeters. And like I say, the, the, the real outliers are, are quite often in, in, in a size 50. What we're looking to do with this is to match the handlebar width to the shoulder width. These are too small for me. They might be about the right size for you though. So the, the way of doing this is we're gonna measure uh, across uh, a skeletal landmark in the shoulders, and this is the acromion process, this is the distal part of the scapula. And uh, we're measuring across that and we're looking to um, match the shoulder width to the handlebar width. The reason for this is that it, when the handlebar width is excessive, it tends to result in the rider's need to roll the wrists like so. This is a primary cause for things like numb hands. It also tends to render the, uh, it more difficult to reach the brake levers and uh, it just results in lots of neck and shoulder tension and like I say, numb hands. So the next measure to think of uh, when particularly considering handlebars is the reach. It's worth noting that not all handlebars measure the same. Some handlebars will have a 70 millimeter reach, which is actually quite short, and they go all the way up to sort of 120, 125 millimeters. When we say reach, we're talking about the distance between where the control is located and the center of the bore of the handlebar. It's essentially, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a measure of how far away the shifter is gonna be from the stem clamp, all right? Now, the reason to consider this is that we see quite a lot of people here with, coming through here with long reach handlebars and very, very short stems. The point I'm making is that by fitting a handlebar with a shorter reach, it can be a very good way of reducing the overall reach of the handlebars and the controls for the rider. So it's a very good way of reducing the, the, the overall length of the bicycle. Uh, this particular handlebar, this is a Data RHM, which is like, which, what I quite like. It tends to be my, my go-to handlebar. Um, either that or an Envy, if we're looking at carbon. We're sort of measuring from the, the bar bore to the center line of this point here. Uh, like I say, there, there are lots of different reaches. The one thing I would say is that uh, there's, there's certain manufacturers suggest a certain reach. I don't know how they measure them because they come out significantly longer. I won't name them because that's a bit unfair. The takeaway here is to really take into consideration what the reach of the handlebar is. Most manufacturers tend to state it on their website and I tend to recommend going with a shorter reach handlebar on the grounds that it tends to render longer stems and let's face it, who doesn't want that? That feeds us straight into handlebar rotation. Now, I use this as a means of offsetting handlebar reach. Now, there's a really great way of doing this to make um, to offset the reach of the handlebar as much as possible. The way I tend to do it is try and get, and just to be clear, this doesn't work with every single shape of handlebar, but it does with most. I want to get the, hand, the end of the handlebar at 90 degrees with the ground, all right? So we're looking to get this bubble level. What that allows you to do is to get you then set the control based on your personal preference and what that does is it offsets the reach. To prove my point here, and when in bike fitting when we measure reach, we measure from the back of the control to the nose of the saddle because it's the most consistent means of measuring how the human interacts with the bicycle. And with my setup recommendation, the reach on this position is 70 centimeters. If you do it with the handlebar set up poorly, it's 71 and a half. So we've taken the point of the, the moral of the story here is that we've reduced the reach of the bicycle by 15 mil without even changing a component. It's a really cost effective way of reducing reach and certainly something that's worth considering when you're setting up your handlebars. This sort of feeds us into, again, the next part of it is your control location. There's a certain element of personal preference involved here. What I tend to recommend is that you don't have the shifter perpendicular with the ground. 
The reason for that is because what it's going to do is it's going to start resulting in you rolling the wrist like this. And what that does is creates tension up through the arms, into the neck and the shoulders, and it can cause neck and shoulder issues. Okay. Uh, so I tend to have, add a little bit of elevation to them so that as you present your hand to the shifter, it sits there nice and comfortably. All right. Uh, it enables you to reach the brake levers easily on both the, 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 the hoods and on the drops. What we're seeing more recently is a trend to, what I see is a trend for uh, the shifters to be run in like so. I mean, I, if you want to do this to your bike, go ahead. I personally feel like it's being carried out to uh, reduce the width of the controls, which can be improved with a, an arrow or a bar. Uh, I'm not going to talk about any aerodynamic gains because uh, A, I haven't tested it, and B, I think anybody who is testing it probably isn't testing it consistently against a narrow or a bar, for example. But, uh, and you know, the shifter isn't really intended to be mounted like this by the manufacturers, but like I say, I don't really see any harm in it. So if you want to do it just to you know, match up with the cool kids go ahead I don't think you're gonna make any gains though I mean let's just say the Grand Tour Pro that works with me doesn't believe in it either so <laughs> so our final tip is that you the reach to the brake levers can be adjusted on almost all modern shifters now this is something that isn't necessary is less important when you've optimized the handlebar width, because if the handlebar is too wide, you end up reaching around the handlebar to get at the brake levers, particularly, so it's a particularly common problem for women who tend to possess narrower shoulders. As a result, the bar width or excessive bar width is usually more of a problem. Now, if you don't want to buy a new pair of handlebars straight away because you want to come to your local friendly bike fitter, then you can actually adjust the brake lever so that it sits close to the handlebar. Now, the way we do it on this particular Shimano, this is a Shimano Claris lever, Pull the lever off and you can see, and Mr. F Mr. Cade is going to video us as we wind this in, you can see that the lever gets closer and closer to the bar, which makes it easier for little hands to grasp. Now, it's worth noting that not all brands of lever are adjusted in this way. Sometimes it's up in here. The best way of finding out how you go about adjusting it is if you type in the shifter type that you have, and it, it'll be typically be written on the brake lever or it'll be written up the top here, and then just write, write Google reach adjustment for that particular brake lever. And you'll tend to find like a, a tech document, particularly from Shimano, on, uh, on how you go about doing it, or you'll probably find some um, some forum on, on how to do it. Or a YouTube video. Or a YouTube video on how to do it. Have we done a video on that? No, we probably should. We probably should. We could link to our own should video. We get, should we get all of the all of the shifters on the planet? Apart from the, the new 105, which you can't adjust the, 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 the you can't adjust the reach on at all anyway. Really? So there you have it. That's how you optimize your cockpit. That marks the end of today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays. We're filming a batch of videos today, so stay tuned, subscribe to this channel for more, and we will continue to make them. If you have any questions related to Bike Fit or the topics we covered today, put them in the comment section down below, and I'm sure James will do his best to answer them. If you want to book a fit with James or one of his staff, head into the description down below. There'll be a link to the bicycle website, and you can do that. They're based in Richmond in London. Thank you for watching, and see you guys soon.